Hello, so I am going to step through the first example problem in the handout available on Camino as a Google Doc. Okay, so here's our example. We're going to use the rational method to determine the 10 year peak flow for the watershed shown in the figure. It's really not a watershed, right? It's a parking lot in a park and it's located in Santa Clara. Um, they slope towards a 100 meter long swale, then flows to the watershed outlet. The adjacent land outside of the parking lot and park drains elsewhere. Okay, and we have some information about mean flow velocities for the parking lot, park, and swale, and runoff coefficients. And so we're going to figure out the peak flow by the rational method. So quick reminder, the rational method is a method we can use to estimate the peak flow it does of a hydrograph for a small watershed. It does not give us any information about the timing of that peak flow within with relation to a storm or the shape for the rising or the falling limb. And the equation I reproduced here is just Q, that peak flow is equal to C, a runoff coefficient that takes into account things like infiltration and, and the um, type of ground cover times I, the intensity, which we will get from intensity duration curves, and then A is the area. So we're going to go ahead and follow the steps outlined in Gupta. Um, and so our first step is going to be to find the travel time by each pathway of water that might fall in this watershed. So our first step is going to be to determine the travel time of water by different paths in the watershed. Let's draw our attention over to our watershed and look at different paths of water. So for example, if a raindrop fell at this part of the watershed, it is going to flow down the park towards the gully into the sewer system and then down this way. Okay. Um, and that's going to be true for any drop of water that falls here. So you could see that on the park side, the drop of water that is going to take the longest is going to be the one that falls in this northeast or top right corner. And it's going to travel 0.3 meters per second for 80 meters along the park, and then 100 meters down to the outlet of the watershed. And then in the parking lot, the water is going to travel 20 meters down towards that gully and then down into the parking lot. Okay, so hopefully you can see by this, this one's fairly easy, that the longest path of water is going to be the one that starts in this upper right, moves along the park, and then down through the center to the outlet. This path is going to be the drop of water that goes 80 meters over land, over the park, and then 100 meters in the swale. And so this first one, that 80 meters over land flow in the park, if we calculate the travel time, we're going to have the distance, 80 meters, divided by the given velocity, which is 0 0.3 meters per second, okay, which is this is 267 seconds, okay? And then in the swale, I have a 100 meter distance divided by the velocity of 1.0 meters per second, which gives us which gives us 100 seconds total. Okay, so step two, let's determine the route travel time. Now, if we had multiple routes and we weren't sure at first which one was gonna end up being the longest, we would have a little more work here. But in this case, we know, we, can, we just did this visually because it's such a small, that it's gonna be that 80 meter overland park um, plus the 100 meters in the swale. So our total time, and this is gonna end up being our time of concentration, is going to be the time that the water takes in the park plus the time in the swale which is going to be my 267 seconds plus my 100 seconds, which is 367 seconds or 6.1 minutes. Okay, and so we are gonna use this 6.1 in our IDF curve. That's gonna be the duration that we use. Okay, so our next step, step three, is going to be to determine the intensity. 
So to determine the intensity, I went to the NOAA 14 Atlas available on the web and looked at the table for Santa Clara. So here I replicate that table for you. Problem statement stated that this was going to be a 10 year peak flow, which means I want to use an intensity with a 10 year recurrence interval as well. So I am going to be looking in this column of that table, and then I'm looking for a duration of five, sorry, six minutes. So it's going to be somewhere between the five and the 10 minute durations. And so we are going to interpolate between these two values, the 0.187 inches per hour for five minutes, sorry, it's 0.187 total inches in the five minutes and the 2.68 inches for 10 minutes. So we're gonna to have to do some manipulation interpolating here. So we know that for five minutes, we get 0 0.187 inches of rain. That's our um, 10 year return period. Um, this is equal to 2.244 inches per hour. And then at 10 minutes, with a return period of 10 years, we design for a storm that has 0 0.268 inches of water, which is 1.608 inches per hour. And so we are going to linear interpolate. And if you do that, you will get that for six inches, I mean, sorry, for six minutes, you will have a rainfall intensity of 2.12 inches per hour. Okay, now this problem was given in centimeters. Um, everything is in SI units. So we're going to convert this. Our I for a six minute storm is going to be 5.38 centimeters per hour. And so this is the intensity we're going to use for our rational method. One more thing we need to do before we use that equation for the rational method is to figure out the C value that we're going to use. And so we're going to calculate a composite C value based on the C value given for the um, park and the parking lot. Okay, so my C that I'm going to use is equal to 0 0.9, which is given as the C for the co concrete parking lot, times the area of the parking lot, which is the 20 meters by the 100 meters, which I am going to write as 0 0.2, okay, kilometers cubed um, or squared. And then I'm going to add to that the, the C value for the park, which is 0 0.25. And I will multiply that by the area of the park of 0 0.8 and then divide by 1.0, the total area, which gives me a C of 0 0.38. So real quick, let's talk about what these two different C values mean. Okay, so a, a Z of 0.9 is suggesting that 90% of the rainfall that falls on the parking lot is going to end up as runoff, is going to contribute to the peak flow. Okay, and on the other hand, the park has a runoff coefficient of 0.25, which is much less, suggesting that 75% of the water is absorbed into the park um, and does not become runoff, which is really good. Okay, let's see if I can do the rest of this in this last minute to keep this video under 10 minutes. So my last step is going to be to calculate Q using the rational. All right, so what does that look like? That looks like Q equals C, which is that composite value that we calculated, 0.38, meaning suggesting 38% of the intensity that falls is going to make it to be peak flow. That intensity is my 5.38 centimeters per hour. And then my area is the total area of the watershed, which is 10,000 meter squared, 
centimeters squared. This 5.38 is centimeters per hour. So I'm going to do a little bit of unit conversion here real quick. And so I am going to multiply this by meters over 100 centimeters to get rid of that centimeters per hour. And then I convert that hour to seconds. 3600. And so this is going to be equal to 0 0.057 CMS. Okay. All right. So I just want to do a real quick comparison. If we had the entire park somehow paved instead of being a park, what would that do to that peak flow? So if the park was paved, then we would not have that composite Q. Instead, my Q would be equal to 0 0.9, and then everything else is the same. And you would get 0 0.135 CMS, which is like significant increase in total flow the edge of this watershed. Okay, so just that's just a quick comparison to see what happens if you completely pave um, an entire area. All right, so that's it for this video.